Hi, and welcome to the Google Sheets tutorial on how to do subtraction. Google Sheets is a really cool platform for doing mathematic equations. Um, works a lot like a calculator when you're entering mathematic equations um, and will give you the results right there. Also allows you to reference cells um, so you can build out different tables and, and reports using uh, its mathematical equation functions. The first part of this I want to cover is just really the basics of how to create uh, a formula so that we can understand how to then do subtraction. Google Sheets formulas use standard formula operators as you would in any mathematic equations. So the equal sign would be equal. Um, addition would be the plus sign. Subtraction would be the minus sign. Multiplication would be an asterisk. Division is a forward slash. And anytime you're using exponents, you'd use the caret, which is a little up arrow. So you use those functions to work with formulas throughout Google Sheets. In order to start a formula in Google Sheets, you always start with the equal sign. Once you have the equal sign in, then you can enter in any function. So like I said, it's great. It works like a calculator almost with mathematics uh, equations. So we'll start really simple, just a seven plus six. Let's see, and we see there, it gives us the results right in the, in the cell um, that we did that equation in. So it can also do more um, complex functions. Uh, so you could do something say like um, equal sign five, plus, let's see here, 20 plus, actually, sorry, um, multiplied by four times five minus five times six. So you see here that we can use parentheses to tell it order of operation. Google Sheets functions with a standard order of operation. So um, multiplication and then division and then su uh, subtraction and, and addition. Um, so it, it does those first, but if you would like to set your own order, um, you can use parentheses as you would anytime you're writing a mathematic equation to get your results and you enter the formula and then you hit enter and it gives you the result. Um, so that's how you would do a basic one. So then it would be pretty easy to assume how we would do a subtraction equal six minus five and we get one. So that's our basic subtraction formula. Now, when we are using Google Sheets, we probably want to do this to use reference cells um, because we want to have data and then get answers from that data. So what we could do, say we have 55 here and 69 here. And we want to get the results of that. So we could say equal, and we can either type B2 minus, or we can click the cell in the question, C2. So, and then we have a results. So that's the basics on how to use it within a Google Sheet. Obviously that's really simple. Now I'm gonna dive into some of the various methods we can use the subtraction um, throughout Google Sheets, depending on what our data type is. So first I'll show you how to subtract percentages from a, a number. So to do that, what we would do here is we would, say we have C2 here with our, our number that we want to get a percentage of, out of. And if we wanna get 15%, remove 15% from 69, what we would do to do that is we would say equal, and we click on C2 here, and then we would subtract, and then we would put C2, times 15%. And now we get the result of 58.65. Now, if we just wanted to see what 15% of 69 is, as a side note, we could do equals C2 times 15%, and there you have 1035, 10.35 is 15%, and that's what's subtracted from there. So that would be how we do it with subtraction, subtracting percentages. It's quite simple. And then we move on if we want to subtract dates. So this is a great one if you want to maybe see um, how many days have elapsed since a certain time. So say our start date is January 24th, 2021. And our end date is January 31st, 2021. So we wanna make sure these are formatted as date. To do that, we can just double click on them and it'll bring up the date pop-up that tells us if they're not formatted as a date, you can come in here and click and come in and format date. And that will also change the look of the format. It just depends how you like it. So this is our 
these are our start and our uh, start and finish date. And now to get the duration and the amount of days that have elapsed since that time, what we would do is we would say equals, and then we want to make sure we put our finish date first minus our start date. And that will tell us that seven days have elapsed. Now, I do want to point out that it's not actually counting January 24th in that because the start date isn't going to be counted just the way it works. If you would like to count that date, you can always just add plus one, and that's going to now count 24th as one of the days and tell you that eight days elapsed from that time period. Another cool function that we can do with the subtract is we can actually subtract time. There's various reasons and methods to subtract time. Uh, the first we're going to cover is it's using a formula just like we've been doing and it's going to be in designed to find the duration or elapsed time from two between two different times so say we want to say 10 a.m and our end time will be 12 30 p.m and we want to find the duration the amount of time that's elapsed between those two times we would say equal finish time minus start time, you'll get the answer in some sort of format. This is automating it and making it look like a time, so 2.30 a.m. That's obviously not what we're going for. We want to see the duration. Um, sometimes it will automate as a number, and it will look weird. It will be a decimal number, and you think that's obviously not what you're going for. The trick here is just to make sure you format it as a duration. So once you tell it down here by going to duration, or you can come in here and go format and go down into number and duration there and now you'll see it comes in at a actual time two hours and 30 minutes have elapsed now in order to subtract a specific amount of time from the number so say you have 11 a.m and you would like to subtract let's say five hours from that and find what time that would be at the way we would do it is we'd say equal select 11 a.m and then we would say minus and now the trick here is we want to say five divided by 24 because there's 24 hours in the day and we, we enter and we'll see here that it's 6 a.m so that was five hours before we know that's correct so that's obviously what what we're looking for now if we want to take that further and subtract um seconds or i'm sorry subtract minutes from there we could say 10.30 a.m. and we want to subtract maybe, we could even say you could go over 60, you could say 90 minutes. So it's an hour and a half, but we want to go, we have the amount of minutes. So we want to do that. So we would say the same concept, we just go here, minus, and then we're going to do 90, but this time instead of 24, since we're working in minutes and we know it's going to be minutes, we want to do the amount of minutes in a day. So it's 1,440. So now we know that 90 minutes before 10.30 a.m. was 9 a.m. And the next thing you can do is you can also subtract, subtract. The next thing you can do is also subtract seconds. So if you have 9.30 a.m. and you want to subtract, say, 2,500 seconds, we will enter equals and select 9.30 a.m., subtract that, or subtract from that 2,500 divided by, and this time we'll do the amount of seconds per day, which is 864,000. And that will give us that is 848, which is correct. So that's how we subtract a specific amount of time using a time conversion. Um, there's another method to subtract a specific amount of time. Um, this, is, this is functional and works quite well, but it also has a bit of a limitation. Um, because it cannot go over 24 hours. So if you wanted to come up here and say you wanted to subtract 26 hours from here, you could see that it was 9 a.m. Now you know that that was the day before, but that's essentially that allows you to go over 24 hours. So this method does not allow you to do that, but it's worth covering in case you don't need to do that. So if we have 10 a.m. and we want to find how many, let's see, we'll say 10 a.m. was three hours before 10 a.m. We could say equal this minus and then we put in this function here it's called the time function the time and then we have the ability you can see here to enter our hours minutes and seconds that we'd like to do so say we want to say what's two hours 35 minutes and 15 seconds before 10 a.m now 
it's not formatted to give us the seconds right now, but we could obviously add that by coming down here and clicking time. And then now we will see that that is seven hour or seven twenty four a.m. and forty five seconds. Now I wanted to give you a couple of other ways of doing subtraction other than just a simple formula. Um, the one of the functions built into Google Sheets is the minus function. It's fairly basic. It won't necessarily um, be the most versatile one that you could use, but if you, it, it's worth knowing how to do in case you need to. So it's just simply, we'll come up here and do it next to this one, um, and it will work for dates and times as well. So, so equal, minus, and you get to put in two numbers, only two numbers, and that's why it's maybe not the most functional um, and versatile, but so you could say we want to time, start or finish time, minus start time, and we'll see that it gives us the same result as we have right here. We just have to convert that to duration same way. Now the last thing I want to cover um, is how to subtract with whole columns. Um, so there's a few different ways to do this. Um, we'll cover a couple of them real quick. So the first one would be is if you're looking for a total. So say you want to find total So in order to do this, you would actually be using the sum function um, within a, a regular formula. So we'd say sum, and we get the whole column there, and then we'd say minus, and then sum again, and get this whole column. And now we will see that after taxes are removed from the, the sale, we had 110 total, total net. So that's one way of doing it, use the function, it uses the sum function to subtract and set up uh, so you can look at a whole table and get a total result. Now, if you wanted to take it and actually get individual net results, there's a couple ways you could do this. So obviously, we will do the basic subtraction formula, which we covered earlier. So that puts that in there. Now, the way Google Sheets is developing, they actually have a suggested auto fill, which would be great. And you can always... Um, take this box to put it in there. Now I'll show you a way to do it without the autofill, but I would definitely use that if it comes up. Now the way to do it without that is if you see this here and you see this little blue square that pops up, if you click that and you just drag it down, it actually copies the, the formula all the way down. And that's a great option. I will point out that it can mess up formatting. As you see here, this no longer has the same um, border around it. So that, that option isn't necessarily the cleanest if you have some sort of formatted table. Um, the other option within here is you can hit Control C and you can actually select the areas that you want it to be paste special and paste formula only. That same effect as what you just what we just did there. And to take that even a step further and probably the most preferred step, just because if you're working within um, Google Sheets on large data sets, you'll end up slowing your system down the more formulas you have. So what I would suggest is actually doing what's called an array formula. So what we would do here is it will be the same, we'll clear out these, it will be the same function we had before, except instead in the beginning we will put in array formula. So equals array formula. And then as it says here, you just enter the formula that you want to be functioned on an array. It gives you a good example. It's basically what we're about to do anyways, um, but we'll cover it real quick. So array formula and we're gonna go Drag here, we're gonna select this range minus this range. Now this is different than sum because it's not gonna add the ranges up. It's just gonna tell it that C3 minus, or BC3 minus C3, B4 minus C4. And you hit enter and it's gonna run all the way down in the net and fill in that, that area. So that's that's a really good effective way of doing it. Um, so that would be the probably the most preferred way of doing a column, uh, whole column for subtraction. As I said in the beginning, Google Sheets offers a lot of methods for subtraction. You don't need all of them to be able to use it and function within it, but it's good to have the information in case um, you need it to apply it in a different way. And this concludes the How to Subtract in Google Sheets tutorial. Thank you for joining us.